Welcome to the Vancouver and Fraser Valley real estate market forecast. We're going to step back in time here and one of the interviews with Bob Cook as we first initially examine the Richmond market as it sets some all-time records in in growth, we'll call it speculation and high high activity in Richmond. Let's step into that interview now. Today we're going to interview Bob Cook from the Pro Group in Delta serving Richmond, Ladner, Tawasson area, White Rock area as he gives us the inside scoop on a 33% increase in prices just experienced in the residential market in Richmond. So let's go say hi to Bob right now. I'm doing great, thank you, Bill. How are you? So, Bob, uh, you're with Remax, and you have been for a lot of years. You want to give us a little bit of understanding of how long you've been around? Yeah, I've been selling real estate in this area, same area, since 1989. Joined Remax in 1995, and have been working with uh, Remax Pro Group Realty, that has uh, uh, offices in uh, Ladner and Tawasson, and formerly had an office in Richmond. Our office is now affiliated with another Remax franchise, Remax West Coast, but we work uh, both communities uh, equally. Good. Now, Bob, the reason why we're here is we got a frenzy going on with, uh, I'm going to call it the ch mainland Chinese buyer, and I know it is maybe a bit more Absolutely. broad spectrum than that, but we're all looking back in shock. And I'm just going to read some numbers here and see if you can substantiate these a little bit. So we've spent yep. the last three or four days doing some, uh, some detailed analysis here on the Richmond area. Last spring was our strongest uh, six months ever. We had an 18% increase in prices in uh, in the spring of 2010, spring to, to June 30th. Already, we're looking at a 33% increase. Like, this is an all-time record. Now, uh, let's just go over the numbers a little bit. Uh, first of all, on the actual number of Sales to new listings ratio is way out of whack. There have basically been very, very few listings come on in December and January, but there certainly have been lots of uh, or a reasonable amount of sales. So that's where I see a big issue. There's just not enough listings to support the amount of sales, number one. That's right. Supply and demand is imbalanced. Yes. So, what's your opinion on this? You, you've, uh, I've, well, we've already had a luxury of having a little bit of a talk a few days ago, and you mentioned, in fact, uh, China appears to have changed some rules on, we'll call it flipping, in mainland China, and uh, that has driven some investors towards um, the waterfront properties in British Columbia. So why don't you go ahead and explain what your understanding of what's going on? Well, our, our take on it is, 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 is we're, we're trying to simplify it too because it can get complicated. But the, the, the mere fact of the matter is that you have a not a lot of uh, an awful lot of wealthy people in China that are looking for safe havens to invest their money. Canada is uh, still known as a positive place to be, a positive place to visit, and now a positive place to do business and invest in. And we have um, plane loads of uh, Asians coming into Greater Vancouver, specifically um, the downtown areas and moving out to Richmond. As you know, Richmond has always been popular with Asians, but even more now so. And I have been involved uh, personally with uh, four cases in the last month alone where single-family dwelling properties that were evaluated in mid-January at about $750,000. The owners decided and the realtor decided to wait and see because they had a feeling of some frenzy of activities. They waited two and a half weeks. They then relisted the property for $880,000, which was $130,000 more than they originally intended to list it for. And it sold for sixty thousand dollars more than the eight hundred and eighty thousand dollar price. Right. So we're now getting uh, all cash, no subjects, and um, in a multiple offer competing situation, all Asian purchasers uh, that were visiting here from out of the country. And uh, these people are here. They have lots of money. They're looking for single family homes, and they're spending it like crazy. And because of this, we're seeing. Uh, values of homes just skyrocket in an extremely short period of time, and we're sitting back trying to advise potential home sellers to say, 
who are asking us, well, what should we do? What should we list it at? And we're going, well, I don't know. The one down the street just sold for this tremendous price. Your house is just as good. Where do we go? And and uh, this is actual experience we're having right now in, in February of 2011. Now, by the way, January 15th, it hadn't yet happened. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. I would say this, this, this frenzy has started in the last six weeks. Yeah. For Richmond, it had happened previously in uh, in the in the Greater Vancouver area of of uh, Dunbar, Kitsilano, Caresdale, uh, sort of that Main Street to Oak Street corridor in there. Uh, they're getting lots of action down there. Okay, now uh, the, uh, the second uh, this is not the case in condos, by the way. Yeah, single family homes only. Right now, by the way, let's just go over a couple of things. First of all. Is it sustainable? Is it going to continue? Now, we've seen a government change in mainland China. Now, that rule's changed. So it's, th- that shows that there is truly a change in uh, buyers. And, and uh, do you see any reason why this shouldn't extend in for the next six months? Uh, what is your opinion? Got any thoughts there on how much? Uh, it, it, it's an educated guess, but our... Um uh, our indications are that we still see a strong influx of people moving money into this country for the for the balance of 2011, and I don't see. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be the same fanatical feeding frenzy, but um, uh, I think it's going to level off and stabilize. But I think we're going to have a strong influx of Asian buyers that are going to look for, for property for the balance of 2011. Okay. Now, the second question is now, Bob, you and I go back a lot of years, but it used to be at a point that uh, people, the original builders or owners of homes in Richmond, when they sold, they might move out to Burnaby, they might move out to eventually to Coquitlam, to Surrey, to Abbotsford, to Chilliwack. Well, yep. right, right now, I just did a little study on uh, West Vancouver and their numbers seem to be up 3% uh, on on actual prices, and their volume appears to be down. So they don't necessarily be seem that that money that's sold. Now, of course, it's a little early. Those people have just sold, so they will be buying maybe three weeks from now. So it's hard to see. But where do you think that will filter to today? The, the your, Think of your vendors, your vendors that are selling – where will they buy? Yeah, it's it's a good question because the, the the standard theory has always been to to sell high and buy low. And if I'm a, a person selling my home in, in Richmond and I've uh, just made uh, nine hundred thousand uh, dollars, it's pointless for me to repurchase in Richmond because I'm in the same feeding frenzy. I've, I've gained nothing. So I want to move farther out from the center of the core of downtown Vancouver to take advantage of the monies and the gain that I have just materialized. So traditionally, uh, our Ladner and Tawasson areas are, shall we say, farther out, and we see them moving into the, primarily going to the southeast. We don't see a lot of relocation from this corridor to the North Shore, North Van and West Van. We don't see that at all. We see them going to the Langley Abbotsford, Chilliwack area, and potentially the South Surrey Corridor, or even South Delta. We have had been involved in transactions from people in Richmond that have purchased homes in the Ladner and Tawasson area in the last six weeks that uh, are doing that because uh, they sold their home for 900-ish, and they bought a home down here for 500-ish, and they're very happy. Now, by and the way... still only 35 minutes from the airport. Now, by the way, we're once again trying to understand this, but for myself, over the years, I have had a lot of Asian customers buy in the Abbotsford area. And, Bob, yep. the reality, every single one of them has moved back west into Metro Town or back back into Vancouver. And I'll be honest, the, the, they're, they're not overly comfortable in Cowtown, okay? So right. they, 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 they must... They must enjoy, I'm going to say, the congestion, but also Richmond itself. Uh, most restaurants have uh, Cantonese on it today. Am I right or wrong? I mean, it, That's correct. So restaurants, street signs, uh, everything. It's, it's uh, the, the Caucasian uh, uh, face in Richmond is, is now uh, definitely a minority. Yeah, so if you are having a vendor that is, in fact, uh, of Chinese descent... I don't see them coming. Would they come to Langley ever? 
I mean, is that a possibility today or not? I don't really know. It's 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 hard to say, and and um, uh, I think that there's still a lot of upside for Asians in in Richmond, and I think that they will uh, they already dominate that community and will continue to do so for another five to ten years. I think there's lots. They're still building like crazy in Richmond. They've got developable land, even though it's primarily multifamily. Um, Okay. And they're, they're doing business in that area, too. There's a good uh, industrial park area for them to, to, to import and exports, and that's a lot of what's going on there. And, and Bob, Ev, I think if anything we've observed over the last 20 or 30 years is Vancouver has ended up being very different in different pocket areas. So, like, for example, if uh, North Korea sinks a battleship today and South Korea is nervous of a potential war, that that money coming over, I'm going to say, ends up in probably a North Coquitlam, right? You know, I mean, I don't... Yeah, I think that's a valid point. And, and remember that Vancouver is a gateway from the Pacific, Yeah. no matter what you know, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Australian, Malaysian, it doesn't really matter, the Philippines, that they like Canada versus uh, as a first step, and they've got to come to Vancouver as the gateway, and they're not generally going to Toronto or, or, or the prairies, uh, some filter to that area, but it, it is a minority. Yeah. So they get here, and they, they're they looking for people of their like um, culture, yeah. And if they've already settled in the in the that particular pocket, that's where they're going. They're comfortable yeah. there. No, absolutely. Now, White Rock, uh, the, uh, the White Rock. First of all, White White Rock is a very low population. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm sure it's under twenty five thousand population in total. It's yep. probably more like seventeen thousand. But uh, you know, looking at White Rock, they had one single new listing in December in the, you know the general residential area. I mean, that's like nothing. And they had fifteen. Yep. Sales. So, like, you have 15 sales with no new listings coming on. That's going to absolutely drive the market silly also. So we've seen that in White Rock. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at Tawas and Ladner area, but I'm assuming that whole little corridor is experiencing the same sort of thing. Like, what are your thoughts on the White Rock area? Uh, yeah, there, there are some differences. White Rock, uh, a tiny little hamlet, sort of uh, surrounded by the the South Surrey uh, uh, corridor, and um, most of White Rock is not level, so it's a, a and it's sloped down to 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 the water, which means you're dealing an awful lot with view property. Yeah. And and uh, therefore it's a big dollar item, seven figures. And um, uh, so it's, it's a pretty select type type market. So I don't want to say it's like West Van, but a lot of West Van is is on a slope as well, and and related to water views and escapes in, in that way. Um, but you can uh, a lot of people down there don't know the difference between White Rock and South Surrey. They can cross the street and they're in one municipality and, and not the other. So we have yeah. to be very careful when we're looking at statistics because that data can be. Uh, can can be deceiving, but there is not enough product in the White Rock Central Corridor, and that's why White Rock, as a municipality, has been concentrating on condos and intensifying the density in the downtown core to help with uh, population increases because they virtually have no developable land there anymore. Right, right. No, well, overall, I mean, uh, uh, I've just heard actually talking to a client here in White Rock in the last uh, couple of hours that. She actually thinks that there's been two or three helicopters going overhead in the last few days that yes. she suspects. I've heard that story. Uh, she suspects are actually buyers, right? Yeah. Now, I've heard the story of a realtor who's actually chartered helicopter flights for and had multiple Asian couples inside the helicopter with an interpreter, and they've been driving San, North Van and White Rock, so Surrey areas, looking at houses from the view side to say. That's one I like. That's one I like. That's one I like. And then, if they're not for sale, they're even knocking on the doors. Right, right. Now and these are cash qualified people. Now, uh, Bob, I I don't know if you broached the subject of flipping here, but uh, was it you that said some of these contracts that are being written, it's actually being transferred to another buyer by the time it completes? I have heard that, and I can tell you that um, within the last thirty days, I've had a. Uh, I'll call him an investor, visit me at an open house, just by coincidence, and he said he was there representing multiple purchasers. Yeah. He wanted to write an offer on that specific, specific property that was being held open, 
and he wanted the uh, term of the contract to say that the contract could be assigned to a third party of his choosing. And uh, I found out later that they purchased four homes that, uh, within the following seven days. Hmm. Or, sorry, wrote offers on four different homes. And none of the homes were for him. Okay, now, and I don't know what's happened there, but I'm assuming he buys something for a million and maybe he sells it at an inflated number of 1.1, but I have no idea. Is that what you're suspecting? I mean, is he... I don't really know. I think, I don't think that's the case because the contract that we end up completing on is the same original number right. uh, as was originally negotiated, but I think he's been retained for a fee by these purchasers to go out and find product that's compatible to their wants and needs. So there's no question he's not doing this for free. Right, right. But whether okay. the property is being flipped, I do not know. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you there are cases in Richmond right now where people have sold their homes and will pick a figure of $800,000 um, two months or a month ago and have now uh, been asked by uh, a, the, the realtor of the purchaser if the realtor can put his for sale sign on the front lawn and the homeowner hasn't even moved out yet, and he's relisting the property for $150,000 more than what they just negotiated a month ago. Hmm. That's how fast the prices are going up in Richmond. So, Bob, let's say we're trying and, to... And, and the rich seller, of course, all is all upset. Yeah. Now, Bob... Let's saying, wait a minute, I gave it away. And now, by the way, let's just say we're trying to protect the vendor here a little bit. Now, you've already mentioned that... You know, there's clients that say, well, Bob, what do we list that? And you go, gee, I don't know. Like, I mean, who does? Because it's so volatile. So here's just one particular thought. If you do a listing today, would you consider saying we will not take the first offer in the first hour, that in fact we will give it a three-day period in which the client can now accept you know, have five yeah, what, come what's in. happening now is we are advising our, our clients, our sellers, to uh, let's agree on a selling strategy or a launch strategy. We specifically time the launch of the listing to maximize the exposure of the product to the planet, let alone MLS, yeah. local mediums, um, print mediums, open houses, real estate tours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we put right in the listing, a condition of the listing is, all uh, uh, no offers will be presented prior to a specific date and time. Right. Okay. So this gives the seller the best advantage to be exposed to the marketplace, uh, to get the maximum um, return on the prospective offers that may come in, and you're trying to create a feeding frenzy so that the seller will benefit from that activity, and people will write fantastic offers for the seller because you're being retained by the seller to do the best for them. Right. So this is a common tactic we're seeing in hot markets right now, and that would be single-family homes, West Richmond. doesn't apply in our segment out here in Ladner and Tawasson as much, so we don't really see that. Um, but, uh, but um, yes, uh, a launching time period with uh, presentations at a specific number of days after the launch is fairly normal now. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I think... And you could end up with four, five, six... Uh, I know a case in Vancouver uh, two months ago, or just before Christmas, uh, property listed for sale for a million twenty, and there were thirty-one offers, and it sold for one point six two. Okay, good. And that's that's pretty rare, but that's what's happening down there. Okay, well, listen, and I and Bob, I think for our industry in general. You said some pretty magic words, and that is, is, first of all, we really don't know what your home should sell for, and I don't think there's any realtor out there right now can say definitively your home is worth this much because the buyers are are new, and you know it, it's like changing almost daily here. So number one is to do your longer term uh, plan of listen, we'll test the market with full exposure. And then we will know from that buyer group what your final price will be. So, um, you know. Well, that's right. Bill and I, you, you and I both know, you have to sit down with your people and say, okay, today, based on what we know, based on the discussions we've had and the information that's available to us through our evaluation process, would you be happy selling your house uh, uh, at this, in this range or at this number? And, and you'll negotiate a level that of contentment that they have. And they say, boy, if we could get that, we would be really happy. Right. So then you devise a strategy on how to best attain that, if it is possible, and create your marketing plan and launch, and away you go. 
Okay. And and what then they find out great we got it or gee we really missed the mark uh, what are we missing here where nothing's come in after we thought we were really competitive or gee we thought we were really high and now we have got offers that are even higher yeah. so that you you're, you're at least you're operating from a premise of informed consent of all the parties and making professional rational decisions right well Bob I'm going to close here so for any of you out there listening to this podcast. Uh, if you're thinking of selling in, in the, this Tawasson, White Rock, uh, Ladner, um, uh, Richmond area, Bob is there to help you at Remax Pro Group Realty. And Bob, your phone number here I've got is 604-946-8000. Is that a good number for you? That's 946-8000, you bet. And they can always go to my website, which is bobcook.com. Yes, and Bob, we thank you for the time. We look forward to an update later on in the year to just see how the dust did settle here. But right now, it is uh, for any buyer or seller out there, you do not want to make a mistake without being informed of all the information. And it's really important to to get all the data before making decisions. You bet. Thanks a Absolutely, lot, Bob. Bill. Appreciate it. Okay. And I'll say goodbye. Bye-bye for Thanks now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.